This episode of the Astro Powder Podcast is brought to you by Gamma. Synchronized monitoring and control of your entire automated process is the core of Gamma's Magic Control 4.0 data management systems. With options like line management, offering deeper insight into productivity and consumption, or energy management, allowing you to monitor and save both energy and air consumption, or batch management, offering tracking of powder used to coat production batches. Gamma provides the very best in technology and connectivity for smarter factory automation. To learn more about Gamma's Magic Control 4.0 data management systems, visit completeitwithgamma.com. Connect it, control it, track it, synchronize it. Complete it with Gamma. Hello, all you powder coating fans, and welcome to episode 51 of the Ask Joe Powder Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Powder. A.K.A. Kevin Biller, and with me, as always, is my esteemed colleague, sidekick, and powder coating extraordinaire, Nathan. He's ChemQuest Powder Coating Research's Vice President of dot dot dot. <laughs> All right, what's up? We're broadcasting from the ChemQuest Powder Coating Research Studios in Columbus, Ohio. Beautiful, sunny Columbus, Ohio, I might add. The purpose of the Astro Powder Podcast is to bring the latest news and technical know-how to the global powder coating community. So let's get it rolling. But before we do, I'd like to give a hearty shout-out to... Shout! Out. Glenn Mason. Glenn Mason. You may wonder who Glenn Mason is. He's kind of a quiet, behind-the-scenes, amazing executive, the president of IFS Powder Coatings. And how do I know Glenn Mason? I'm only thinking back in my illustrious career. I think I recall meeting Glenn for the first time in 1997 in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, That was where they had the one time... They had the powder coating show mm. in Atlanta. Right. And how I remember was 1997. It was the year that the Atlanta Braves met the Cleveland Indians in the World Series. Hmm. Uh, and it was, you know, a big thing going on in the city at the same time right. as the, the powder coating show. So anyway, uh, Glenn was a young man back then, and I guess I was as well. But he's been president of... IFS powder coatings for, I think, from its inception, which was in 1999. And it's, it's kind of an incredible story. Number one, you, you, people probably are aware, if you're in, in the United States, how big and how influential IFS powder coatings have become in our industry. To put it in perspective, it's become the largest privately owned powder coating manufacturer in the United States. So, very impressive. If you look at the trajectory that IFS Coatings has has had over the last 20, 24, 25 years, they've gone from a small company, which is headquartered in Gainesville, Texas, which is north of Dallas, uh, far enough north that it's not a suburb of Dallas. So, it's it's out there in in uh, God's country, but um, they've done an incredible job of growing organically. They've had a couple of acquisitions, small ones, throughout their history, but this has all been orchestrated behind the scenes by Glenn Mason, who is a tireless, passionate powder coating person uh, from the onset of his career. But, you know, say a few things about IFS Coatings. Uh, They have... Uh, not only thermoset technology, but also thermoplastic powder coatings. They have a very good presence in the low temperature cure or heat sensitive substrates market. They've also have been pioneers, and I I, I would argue that they are, they are industry leaders when it comes to hyper durable. Uh, and what I'm talking about is AMA 2605, Qualicoat 
class three powder coating technology, not just the technology, but the business. So they've done an incredible job. They've expanded with another facility in Oklahoma, and and just uh, in the last year or so, year and a half, uh, they completed construction of a new facility uh, in Gainesville, Texas. They've, they, they've been on a tear ever since uh, Glenn started that company, and I want to just say hats off to Glenn. Uh, he does it. He doesn't look for a lot of fanfare. Uh, been extremely successful, has an incredible team of professionals. Very impressive, Glenn. And I uh, just want to say hats off to you and the career and the organization that you have built. Well, and, you know, let's face it, we're powder nerds. Like, we always look at, like, the powder coating solution to any sort of coating problem. And that's why, like, I, you know, I don't like to pick favorites, but I do respect IFS because they are, you know, they're a powder company first, and they always approach things from the powder coating perspective. They don't have a, you know, liquid architectural or automotive or whatever division that they're internally having to kind of vie against. Um, so yeah, they, when it comes to the low temperature substrates, they're looking for a way to put powder on it and they're like architectural, you know, monumental structure stuff. Let's put a powder on it. That's, um, it's a cool approach and, you know, we respect that a lot. Yeah. I agree with you a hundred percent. Uh, yeah, when when they go after something, there's no internal struggle in their company saying, you know, should we go after it with you know, our liquid or our, what, whatever other technologies they may have in their their portfolio. It's powder coatings 100 percent of the time, and yeah, it really shows in their approach to business and their success. So, let's uh, transition Nate to our guess what section. Guess what. All right, here's one from Coding's World. Um, RPM opens an cent- innovation center of excellence. Uh, RPM International Inc. has officially opened the doors to its new innovation center of excellence in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's basically a state-of-the-art facility in the shared research and development <coughs> center for RPM companies. And for anyone that's not aware, they're one of those large sort of conglomerates. They have a lot of companies underneath them powder coating related is tci coatings but they also have other paint companies they own rust-oleum i think is the biggest um well they've got you know roof coating companies and they've got uh hobbyist paint coating companies they've got you know spackling compound companies they're they're very diverse but everything related to coatings or things similar to coatings yeah, but it's interesting they're they're dedicating their resources to like one central innovation center for liquid and powder applications labs, resin analytical labs, sample production and formulating labs, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's an unusual move and it's 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 a very positive one. We'll see how it works out, but yeah, hats off to that company. Another item, um Teneris acquired Matters Pipe Coatings Unit Shawcore. Shawcore is one of the industry leading pipeline suppliers, and under their umbrella is powder coatings. And it's really a kind of a big one. It's one that's not on the radar screen for us, you know, industrial type powder coating people. But yeah, Shawcore is, you know, leading manufacturer in North America of pipeline coatings and pipelines that um, I think, you know, they're, they're fairly vertically integrated. Not sure if they make their own powder coatings or not, or not but they are the leader. Um, I imagine they use a lot of them. Huh? Oh, my goodness, yes. All right, we've got, um, this is another acquisition I think is really interesting. Altana is um, going to acquire Silverline. Um, Altana is the parent company of BIC, or BYK Book, you know the yeah. um, the additives company. It's a German company, but yeah, they own the big additives. They own um, the big instruments, but also Eckert. 
Agreed. That's their their effect pigment. Line. Special effects, yeah, effect pigments. Special yeah. effect pigments. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Silver Silver Line is you know it's a North American company based out of Pennsylvania, I believe, and they're not the biggest player in the game, but they're probably comparable to Eckert's footprint in North America. So I think combining their forces there, they're going to be a pretty big deal. Not quite a monopoly, but there are very few aluminum flake producers that you know sell their materials into the coatings industry. You know, you can you can count them on one hand. You know, Silver Silverline, Eckhart, Sun Chemicals has the, the Bendelutz brand, and then there is Schlank. Schlank. So it's a pretty short list, but yeah, it is big news that uh, yeah Altana bought Silverline, which, you know, they're, they're both leading suppliers and leading technology. Well, that's, uh, yeah, they're very houses. similar in their product line. Oh, it's not going to be complicated to, you know, to merge their products together. But, yeah, um, that's a big one. It's a pretty big move. Now let's listen to a word from our sponsors. Synchronized monitoring and control of your automatic coding process is at the core of the powerful, user-friendly platforms for complete smart factory automation by Gama. Gama Connect, the newest smart factory production information tool from Gama, provides full visibility of the current status and key performance indicators for your Gama powder coating system. The Gama Connect dashboard, available anytime and anywhere, is a safe cloud-based digital management tool providing comprehensive monitoring and analyzing capabilities that empower you to improve your operational efficiency, maximize resources, and reduce operating costs. To learn more, visit completeitwithgama.com. To speak with a representative or schedule a demonstration, call 877-437-6771. And be sure to mention, Ask Joe sent me. Connect it, synchronize it, analyze it, optimize it. Now is the time to complete it with Gama. ChemQuest Powder Coating Research is a proud sponsor of the Ask Joe Powder Podcast, and the only independent laboratory dedicated to powder coating technology. We do everything from evaluating raw materials, formulating the next generation of coatings, developing new products, consulting, testing, troubleshooting, training, and more. Our parent company, ChemQuest, provides expert business strategy and advisory services in all aspects of the specialty chemicals value chain, including expertise in both liquid and powder coating. To find out more, email powdercoating at chemquest.com or visit our website at chemquest.com slash cqpcr. Thanks for listening to the Ask Joe Powder Podcast. The ChemQuest Group is the parent company of CQPCR and provides strategic consulting to companies throughout the specialty chemicals value chain, including advisory services on business strategy, market research, mergers, acquisitions, or divestitures, manufacturing excellence, and formulation, application development, and benchmarking for liquid coatings and adhesives through our sister facility, the ChemQuest Technology Institute. Please contact Edie Fox Abrams, Vice President of Business Development at info at chemquest.com. All right, it's time for our question and answer segment of our program. Do you have a question? Ask Joe Powder. Well, you can ask him. Ask Joe Powder. He has the answer. That'll advance your powder coating. It's the Ask Joe Powder podcast. All right, we have a multi-parter here, and this one comes from Vicky D. in Detroit. Vicky says, Joe, I have a few questions for you regarding the powder coating process and defects. I hope you don't mind taking the time to answer them for me. Here we go. Is there any indication that static electricity could be causing defects such as fish eyes, cratering, or bits in the powder coating process? Is any static electricity generated in any one of the powder coating systems? What products are commonly used when repairing the types of defects noted above? And last but not least, how are powder coating companies ensuring that dust and lint 
or at a very minimum prior to coating their products. Joe, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Hey, Vicki. Yeah, thanks for the question. And my goodness, this is a, a very common problem. You know, defects, where do they come from? Magnets, how do they work? Yeah, you know, how are they caused and how do you correct them? You know, troubleshooting is a huge, you know, it's, it's a process and it's uh, sometimes very painful uh, because answers are not that obvious. But well, let me break this down for you. Uh, one of the issues you first raise is static electricity. Kind of like, is there static electricity and, you know, how does that affect things? Um, can it cause fish eyes and craters and things? Okay, static electricity. Absolutely, there is static electricity, and there's actually more than one source when dealing with powder coating application. When we're talking about powder coating application here, Vicki. It's uh, we're going to limit this conversation to the most common electrostatic application through spray guns uh, for powder. You know, the, this this explanation won't include. Um, fluidized bed or flocking, hot flocking or anything like that. So we're going to... We're gonna tribo. Tribo or anything like that. So, okay. You may already know that powder coatings are electrostatically charged, <laughs> typically by a corona mechanism near the tip of the business side, the outlet of the spray gun. This works at a very high voltage, usually somewhere between... 80,000 to 100,000 volts uh, being delivered from uh, an electrode at the tip of the gun. This high voltage ionizes the air, creating a field of electrons or a negative charge. Now, the key here is it's high voltage, but it's delivered at a very low current. So it's, it's basically microamps, so the process is relatively safe. Nevertheless, there is a lot of charge. The powder is pneumatically conveyed into this electrostatic field. It picks up that negative charge and then heads to the nearest earth or ground. The object in this process is to make your parts the closest ground, and then the powder deposits on the surface of, of, of those parts. So, yeah, there's a lot of static electricity in this powder coating application process. Um, the other thing that is kind of important to understand is static electricity is generated elsewhere in the finishing system. Just the mere fact that powder particles are being conveyed um, in fluidizing hoppers through powder pumps, hoses, and spray guns, a static charge is created because materials are touching each other, dissimilar materials are touching each other. So this extraneous generation of charge it, it can influence uh, powder deposition, and you have to keep it in mind. So just keep that in, in, in your back pocket. And the next part of the question Vicky asks, does static electricity cause fish eyes, cratering, and bits? And, you know, the, 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 the quick answer is probably not, but let's talk about what, what we could be seeing uh, as far as defects and imperfections in the, in the finished uh, coating. There is a very characteristic defect that is caused by electrostatics, and it could be considered or mistaken as a, a crater or a fisheye. Um, what happens is excess charge can build up in a powder coating layer, and I'm talking about the layer of powder that's being deposited on the part, if it is applied too quickly, too thick, and too heavy. Um, what, what can happen is a buildup of charge can cause powder particles to burst away from the substrate. This is because there's a localized heavy concentration of charge that cannot get to the ground because of the layer of powder creating insulation. These defects resemble very small volcanoes, and you can see them in the finish even before the powder melts and flows in the oven. Um, these can cause a rumpled appearance, and it looks like kind of almost like an orange peel. Now, you mentioned fish eyes. Fish eyes are caused by a completely different mechanism and are more distinct in their, their appearance. Uh, 
Fish eyes are created by a significant differential in surface tension between the molten powder and an extraneous contaminant. Um, give you an example. Some of these contaminants are lubricants and oils that could be uh, entrained in your uh, airstream that you're using to spray your powder uh, through the system. It can also be from things like lubricating oils, like WD-40. It's a, it's a kind of a kiss of death uh, when it comes to causing craters, the fisheye type, um, but also silicone lubes and things as simple as residual uh, metal working fluids that might be on the surface of your parts. Or even incompatible powder chemistries can can cause craters too absolutely if you're spraying a lot of different types of powders you can get craters from just powders floating around in the air but you know fish eyes are really gross defects they're characterized by deep circular voids in the coating film and sometimes they're they're so bad they they actually reach the substrate now just simple craters they're kind of ambiguously defined as defects similar to fish eyes, but they're typically smaller in diameter. Uh, and craters often don't reach the surface of the substrate. They kind of typically look like dimples. Another question was bits. And as for bits, I imagine you're referring to unmelted protrusions in the finish of the cured powder coating. Now, these are not caused by static electricity. Common sources of bits are environmental dirt, and that dirt can come from an oven, spray area, unclean application equipment. Lint from clothing. Yeah. And, and these you know, bits or protrusions are typically more prominent in thin films, um, which means they, they could come from a substrate that has defects on it. If it is from a substrate, typically you'll see it at thinner films, and I'm talking about, you know, around, I don't know, 35 microns and thinner. If you see that the bits, the the incident or the concentration of bits decreases with thicker coating films, you can suspect either the powder or a contaminated substrate. If film thickness doesn't seem to be a factor, you see bits regardless of difference in film thickness, it's probably environmental and it's probably deposited after the powder coating has been applied. Okay, so another question was repair. Here's what I would recommend for repairing defects like fish eyes, craters, bits. You can do kind of a a light buffing with an abrasive like a Scotch-Brite or maybe a 200 grit sandpaper then wipe the surface uh, with a maybe a, a weak solvent like alcohol, or, or you could even use acetone if you acetone. just be careful. So you wipe the surface and then run those parts through the powder coating operation and put a, a second coat on. Alternately, you can consider using liquid paint-based touch-up if the, the, the repair is small and localized. You got to remember it might be hard to kind of blend those in, or feather them into the powder coating. So yeah, keep that in mind. The other thing that's important if you're going to use a liquid-based touch-up paint, make sure that it meets the performance requirements of the original powder coating. That includes color, my friends. So keep that in mind. All right. And uh, the next question or final question was. Are powder coating companies doing everything to minimize dust and lint? Okay, you said doing everything. Some are, some aren't. There's a lot of people in between. So high-quality coating shops are very clean, and what they do is they isolate their application areas. They use filtered makeup air, and they keep very tight protocols on allowing operators to enter the uh, the application center um, and and it keeps things under control not only by the the engineering but also by the, the training and the um, practices and procedures of the finishing operators. As for powder coating manufacturers, uh, there's a range of quality. Large producers have prominent quality programs 
but that doesn't necessarily mean they clean their equipment well or that they produce perfectly clean products. So, you know, I, I recommend if you're a powder coating user that you partner with your powder coating suppliers, uh, including auditing their facilities, tour their facilities, talk to their people, look at their quality programs. You're going to learn a lot. And like I said, it's a partnership. You want to work together to make sure everybody wins uh, in the end. The other thing to, to consider is word of mouth is a very good means to learn about a, a powder coating supplier. So talk to your colleagues, uh, talk to the people you may meet, you know, maybe if you belong to a powder uh, coating association, uh, and, and find out what they think. Okay, Vicki, I hope this helped you better understand the powder coating question. That was a long answer to a, a number of questions. Um, and please let me know if you have any more questions. And good luck with all your future endeavors. Joe Powder. I'm a rambling man. <laughs> all right. Time now for upcoming events. Hey, friends, where are we going? To an upcoming event. All right. Um, depending on when this uh, episode comes out, the week, uh, this current week, or the week of February 4th through 9th, uh, 2024, is... The Waterborne Symposium in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, the, actually, the full name of it is the Waterborne High Solids and Powder Symposium. So there is uh, typically a little bit of a, a presence of of powder coatings there. When they say powder coatings, it's with, it's a, with a lowercase p. <laughs> Still, I I've never been to New Orleans. You got. I need go. to go. Maybe you, I'll go next year. And then later in the month. At the Bombay Exhibition Center in Mumbai is the Paint India Conference. That's the February 22nd through 24th. And then Powder Coating Week, that's the Powder Coating Institute's annual week-long event that they put on. It's it's combination with um, CCAI and PCI. But 11th through 13th of March 2024 is the Powder Coating Technical Conference, they call it. That's, Looks like they have a pretty good lineup this year, so it's, it's uh, worth checking into. Absolutely. The 26th through 28th of March 2024 is Eurocoat 2024. Uh, that's in Porte de Versailles, Paris, in France. And then April 30th through May 2nd is the American Coating Show at the Indiana Convention Center in Indianapolis, uh, we'll have a booth there. That's kind of the big, you know, the big international show. There's a North American one and there's a European one on the alternating years. But that's that's the big American show, at least. And also, uh, the call for papers is out for the Sink or Swim conference that's put on by the Cleveland Coding Society. That's uh, takes place in June. It's sink or Swim, I think it's. They're kind of like alluding to waterborne coatings in a kind of a sly Cleveland kind of way. I grew up in Cleveland, by the way. Um, yeah, they don't talk much about powder, but it's, it's a pretty small show. And if you're around, pop in, say hello. It's a very technical show, too, which, True. you know, if you're interested in the molecules and, you know, monomers and polymers and that sort of stuff, it might be a show for you. Yep. All right, my friends, you can find Ask Joe Powder columns in a variety of different publications. And when I say publications, um, it's as much an online presence as it is in some cases. Some people are still are uh, printing magazines. But our good friends in Italy, the International Paint and Coatings Magazine, um, they carry a Joe Powder column in every one of their issues. Our good friends in the UK and Asia, part of the DMG uh, events group, they publish Joe Powder as well. PPCJ, which is Polymers Paint Color Journal, uh, and their sister publication, APCJ, which is Asia Pacific Coatings Journal. Uh, so you can find us there. PCI Magazine, I'm talking about Paint and Coatings Industry Magazine. They carry Joe Powder in one of their tabs on their website. 
I don't know if it's under blogs or if it's under finishing today, but it's not too hard to find. Uh, you can also find us in Powder Coated Tough Archives. Um, go to their publications under the powdercoating.org uh, website. Uh, we're also um, kind of ask the expert and then Joe Powder in parentheses, Products Finishing, which is a gardener, par uh, gardener publication it's called PF Online. And speaking of Products Finishing, uh, they'll be publishing an article by Kevin Biller in their next issue. It's how to select the right outdoor durable powder coating. So you can look for that probably a month or so. Nate? One more thing. Um, on March 14th, uh, yours truly and Eric Casebolt are going to be going to be doing a webinar for paint and coating industry or PCI magazine. Um, it's basically a three-hour short course on just powder coating fundamentals, <clears throat> what goes into a powder coating formula, what how to choose the appropriate resin system, stuff like that. But it's a it's a good overview. It's a three hour powder coating fundamentals course and it's not um super involved like the two day PC kitchen classes that we um conduct here at the lab. But anybody that's interested, um go to PCI Mag dot com and look for the um PCI Academy virtual short courses. Sounds good. And you can find us online at astropowder.com. If you want to be the first to know when an episode comes out, uh, which probably maybe be more frequent this year than it was last year. Hey, we're going to try. <laughs> Just uh, subscribe. We're on every one of the um, podcast listing apps and websites. We have a YouTube channel. and a, But if you'd like to ask Joe a question, the email address is askjoepowder at yahoo.com. Or you can call and leave us a message. Country code one four seven eight two ask Joe. That's one four seven eight two two seven five five six three. This has been a production of ChemQuest Powder Coating Research. Original music editing, stingers, and all that good stuff. It's done by Nick Page. Mm. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Hey, keep your powder dry, my friends. I didn't have a good one. That was bad. No problem with that. Thank you for listening to the Astro Powder Podcast. This episode was brought to you by Gama. Color changes have never been so easy and fast. Gama's Optiflex Pro Q unit provides the fastest color change for a manual powder gun in the industry at 35 seconds. This can be as much as an 80% reduction in your typical changing process. Power Clean technology, built into our Optiflex Pro Q unit, efficiently cleans the entire powder path from injector to gun tip so you're ready for quick color changes without any manual adjustments. To speak with a representative or schedule a demonstration, call 877-437-6771. That's 877-437-6771. And be sure to mention, Ask Joe sent me. Bring it, boost it, change it, finish it. Now is the time to complete it with Gamma. You need to go. I mean, I'm a po'boy enthusiast. I'm a jambalaya-holic. <clears throat> and, yeah, I just want to go there and eat food. And Yeah, beignets. <laughs> it's all good. Cajun Creole. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong eating there. Um...